as I get deeper into the world of sovereign citizenship, Moorish citizenship, and First Amendment protesters, uh, the, the stranger things get. This world is new to me, so it's fascinating and I'm finding it quite interesting. Today, I'm going to take a look at a video uh, involving a First Amendment auditor. Uh, perhaps the most harmless, um, but maybe the strangest of the, the strange birds that we talk about on these videos is the First Amendment auditor, an individual who uh, videotapes the police and other government offices in public in order to hold them accountable. And I must say that if done in a practical, safe, and legal manner, I'm supportive of the auditor. Uh, doing being an auditor uh, in a in a non-safe uh, and illegal manner is certainly something that I would not support. So we're going to take a look at this short video. I'm going to do some analysis on it from a legal perspective because uh, amazingly, as short of a video as it is, it brings up several uh, funny, uh, important concepts when it comes to the First Amendment and. Uh, recording in public and the criminal justice system. So take a look at this video with me. Uh, if you enjoy my content, please like, please subscribe, please comment, and please share. I'm getting a lot of love on YouTube. I would like for it to continue. Even if you don't like my videos, click the dislike button. Just interact with me. If you don't like what I'm saying, leave a negative comment. I just want the interaction. So let's let's take a look at this video this is well first let me give a little background here um this is an auditor videotaping his visit to the probation office now the video itself doesn't say exactly what he's on probation for all right but watch some of the words that pop up on this video that they made all right and then we will talk about it afterwards How you doing today? What's up? How you doing today? Doing all right. Good. Good. Okay. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, you guys took me to court yesterday on law. Appreciate that. Go ahead, stand up state. You cannot film on the practice yesterday. Whoa, hey, whoa. Take it easy, guys. Take it easy. Whoa, hey, whoa. Can I get my keys to the driver down there? Yeah, no What what am I being charged with? This time you're under arrest for violation of the at least the guards remain silent. I mean you say it can be used against you in a court of law. Either Okay, so let's dig into that. Uh, I popped out of the corner because it's just gonna be my analysis going forward. All right. So this this auditor was going to the probation office to sign in. He's recording inside the lobby of the probation office. Now, in and of itself, recording in the lobby of a probation office or even a police department is, in the vast majority of states and in the United States in general, not illegal, okay? 
you can likely record. Now, it might be against their rules. They may hassle you. They may even arrest you and then release you, okay? But then it's not illegal. They could be risking a lawsuit, but they may not even care, all right? It's not illegal. Uh, there's no reasonable expectation of privacy in a waiting room like that, whether it's a probation office or a police station. However, you watch this guy, he goes in, you know, he makes a, a sly comment to the person behind the window, and then uh, one of the officers notices him, comes out around into the, the lobby area and arrests him, all right, and says that you are being arrested, and you saw the graphic go up, it says you're being arrested for violation of the terms and conditions of your probation. So let's talk about terms and conditions of probation. Uh, once you are on probation, you have been found guilty of a crime and you have been given a sentence. Once you have been convicted of a crime, the Supreme Court of the United States has stated you give, you lose certain rights. That's why you can be put in jail. That's why you can be put in probation. You can be sentenced to life in prison. Once you are a convict and, and you're given a sentence, you lose certain rights. What happened to this individual, this auditor, is he was convicted of a crime. The video doesn't state what it was. He was put on probation. And as a condition of his probation, and I don't know exactly what the terms of that, the, the probation were, but as a condition, he was likely told that he could not record on his phone or with whatever in certain places. Now, that leads me to conclude, and I don't know, this is a recent video, leads me to conclude that whatever he was arrested and convicted and put on probation for in the first place likely had to do with his auditing. If the case went that far, if he was auditing in a public place, in a private place, he was likely doing it in a manner that was possibly not safe or was in violation of the law, and that led ultimately to his arrest and his conviction. So he wasn't arrested here for just videotaping in a public place he was arrested for violating the terms and conditions of his probation which the court was allowed to place him on because he was convicted of a crime it's just very important to note when you are convicted of a crime you lose certain rights even even constitutional type rights you can lose constitutional rights you can be or you can no longer carry firearms uh, when you've been convicted of certain crimes those are legal okay and this this united states supreme court has stated this many times and a long time ago so he again he could have recorded in that public place likely if he hadn't been convicted of a crime so let's speculate a little bit as to what he was convicted of and the trap that some of these auditors fall into now i addressed this on my prior video which i talked about uh the parking sovereign citizen that individual was actually an auditor again i'm learning this new language in these strange birds who are out here now the auditors again i'm all for what they do if they do it in a safe uh in, in a safe and legal manner be in a safe and legal manner and I, I would add that they should also do it in a respectful manner um but as long as it's legal i, I i'm supportive of it regardless these auditors so as I discussed in this prior video, let's let's assume that this individual was out in public uh, videotaping uh, a police stop. Okay, um, if he exhibited other strange behavior, that may give the police reasonable suspicion to ask him what his name is, who he is, ask him to identify himself. That doesn't mean he has to show them ID. It just means he has to tell them what his name is. So I'm speculating a bit here, but that may have been the trap that he fell into. Let's say he's recording. They they perceive his 
behavior as suspicious. They ask him to identify himself. He refuses. Boom. That's a violation of law in multiple states. I don't know what Alaska's law is, but a lot of states have specific uh, stop and identify statutes where if you don't identify yourself when the police have reasonable suspicion, you can be arrested and charged with a crime. Again, you don't have to give ID, but you do have to say what your name is. If he refused, if the auditor in this situation refuses to give their name, then they're falling into a trap and the police can't arrest them. There's other charges the police could throw at them, obstruction of justice. And again, if they're getting too close or too involved in an arrest, it's possible that could meet the statute of obstruction of justice or disorderly conduct. So you really gotta be careful when you're out there auditing. Stay, stay at a safe distance, okay? And don't disrupt the activity that the police are, are, are you know, engaging in. It's just stupid. It's not, and, and it's not safe for anybody involved. Um, but if they do approach you, give them your name. Do not give them a false name. That also is a crime. I, one time while uh, observing court, I saw this hilarious case where uh, a, a drunk guy was being stopped for public drunkenness and probably a couple of other things, and he ended up getting arrested, put in jail. His case was held over, but the attorney at the preliminary hearing beat the false ID charge. The guy, when the police asked him who he was, he I think he said that his name was... was uh, who was that um, when Chuck Norris, Walker, Texas Ranger, he told the officer, <laughs> apparently in all seriousness, that his name was Walker and that he was a Texas Ranger. And, and he went on this spiel about being an officer. And I think the officer may have felt stupid because he might have believed him or looked even looked into that. And I think he took steps to verify that this individual was not a Texas Ranger by like contacting the state of Texas. I was watching that hearing laughing and he probably felt really dumb, but the officer also wanted to prove the case against him. So he, he verified at that in the argument the attorney made to the judge was a really good argument. It was said, look judge, he, he gave him the name of, of a popular TV show and character. He found this guy practically homeless uh, like I'm, I, he might have been homeless, drunk, under a bridge, the officer could not have reasonably believed that this individual was a Texas Ranger. And the judge, the judge threw that charge out. Now he got his case got held over on a bunch of other charges. He's likely going to get convicted on, but they threw that charge out. So just a quick lesson in false ID: don't give the police a false ID. Never. It's just not, it, it's rarely going to work out in your favor because they're going to likely detain you regardless, all right, and put you in jail and uh, they're going to find out who you are uh, one way or another. And if you don't identify yourself, that in and of itself is a crime. And then they'll find out who you are anyway once they have you detained. So um, a few lessons here. Uh, this this auditor, the video sort of looks like, but they're honest, they're upfront, and I even let it run uh, just to give this guy. If you like what you like auditors, maybe check out this guy's show. You saw his clip at the end. Um, the lesson here is number one: you can record in a majority of public places. Now they may have policies that say that you can't, and I'm telling you, you're risking arrest, possibly an illegal arrest. But there's a lot of case law out there that says um, that you can record in the waiting rooms and other public places because there's no reasonable expectation of privacy. Uh, be, be careful about it, um, but it's, it's likely legal. Doesn't mean it won't land you in jail. I mean, if you want to go through that. Uh, number two, when you're on probation, they're going to they're gonna apply different rules to you that seem like invasions of your rights. And that's because you've been convicted of a crime and that is perfectly legal. Number three, if you are out there auditing, uh, identify yourself, give the police your name. That's one of the ways that they're gonna arrest you is if you don't identify yourself. They're allowed to ask you your name, get your identity, 
all right, and uh, run you through the system, see what's going on with you, because auditing, you know, it's a bit of a, of a suspicious activity. Now, I, I let me back that up. They have to have reasonable suspicion to do that, and recording alone, in my opinion, should not meet that standard. Check your state laws, okay? Check your state laws. Um, but, you know, be careful, and if the police approach you, give them your name. Um, if they don't have that reasonable suspicion, y you may not have to, okay? But, uh, again, just give them your name. It, there's very little risk, and, and it definitely could land you in jail. And your only recourse would be a very expensive lawsuit. So I hope you enjoyed this short video I wanted to make tonight. I had a little bit of time. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Like or dislike comment, give me some feedback, engage. Uh, thank you very much.